Alright, so thank you everyone for joining us today on Saturday, September 25th. Uh, we have a very special guest today, Elisa, our uh, local celebrity. She has the most views on YouTube, right? Uh, compared to who? <laughs> <laughs> compared to all of us here. <laughs> and compared to any uh, other flipper that we about know. About 2 million views. 2 million views! Wow! So how much did YouTube pay you for you 2 million views? Um, it's about a couple thousand a month. Really? That's that's good yeah. cash flow. That's like a rental property, so that's not bad. <laughs> and you don't have to deal with tenants and stuff. Yeah, but content creation is, is a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, you're doing good <laughs> yeah. at it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, very good at building up your YouTube channel. That's amazing. So, um, mm -hmm. so we have a quick agenda for today. So here's our agenda. We're gonna go over some quick uh, wins for the week, and then some interesting news, and then we'll jump straight into our interview. So we'll try to uh, jump in right away. So then that way we can learn as much as possible. So let's go ahead and start. So any wins for the week? We want to start out positive. Uh, any wins for the week before we begin our session today? Anyone has something interesting? Anyone got a deal? I have a win. Have a win this oh, morning. yeah, Margie, Margie, you got a win. Yeah. Um, I booked a ticket to Spain to see some properties for it's... $281 round trip. Oh, in Spain? You're going to buy a property in Spain? Yeah. I was thinking about it, but I don't want to jump in there without seeing the area. So, yeah. Um, so I heard it was a, a lot cheaper right now because of COVID in Spain. So let's see. Wow. But I just want to say hi to Elisa. Hi, Elisa. I watch all your YouTube channels. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Wow, that's so cool. So let's all fly to Spain together. 300 bucks. And then we'll look at yes. some, we'll look yes, at some rental properties. Let's do it. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. So let us know how it goes. And... Uh, um, how much the price are when you go there and then that'll be really interesting for Airbnb yeah so very very cool um, any needs and wants if you guys have needs and wants uh, with your real estate business uh, with any deals you're having challenges with any uh, just any challenge anything anything you want just reach out that's my email and I'll try to get back to you I've been kind of busy um, I might be a little slow but I'll get back to you with any uh, help you, you might need so feel free to reach out and we have some upcoming events we have the mixer coming up in Big Alice so our friends are hosting that and um, they asked me to speak so I said sure why not so next Saturday instead of this uh, zoom session we'll have a live event um, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. so you want to come down Margie from Fresno next week yeah, I'm coming down. I'm coming down over there. So we don't have the 10 to 11, right? Yeah, so let's, I'll just go right there. Yeah, let's skip the aligned one and then we'll do the 12 to 2. So we'll all hang out down there. Oh yeah, and then I heard that uh, you got an offer on yours and Kevin's flip in Fresno. Yeah, he's on his way. Is Kevin here? I'm not sure. Yeah. So Kevin, I, I don't want him to, you know, it's it's Kevin's flip, but he hired me to flip it. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have a really great offer. Like yeah. he stands fifty grand. So yeah. Kevin, are you <laughs> he's like, driving. It's like so thirty thousand more. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. So we're wow. so excited for that. That's sure. amazing. So good job. So fifty k on a Fresno flip that only bought for like one hundred eighty grand. That's like twenty or thirty percent return. That's amazing. Yeah, so so very good job, very good job designing yeah. it. So um, if anyone wants help designing, reach out to Margie, and then we'll probably host a class on how to design as well, so we can learn how she did that because because the bar liked it so much, they paid thirty grand over in Fresno. Who does that? That's crazy. Yeah, that's very very amazing. Very good job. So, and I think it's gonna appraise because I'm looking at the comps. Yeah. Um, it, it's gonna appraise for very that. Very nice. So, so yeah. Congratulations. Um, so let's go over a quick market update. Very, very quick. Um, so quick, like 60 seconds. So let's check out the active inventory in Santa Clara County right now. Active, there's 855 active homes, which is not a lot. So every single week, there's still 
not a lot of inventory so it's just still very competitive right the market's just crazy right now now let's look at the pendings pendings 11 um, 11 88 11 88 so still more pendings um, how many actives under 1.2 214 so 214 only 20 percent of those houses are affordable in the bay area um, how many pending under 1.2 um, 347 so a lot of pendings how many sold within the last 30 days so it's, let's check out sold uh, 312 312 so let's look at those numbers again so every month one third of the inventory is being bought up so that that means three months um, in the future all the inventory is all gone so there's just nothing on the market at all so the market is still pretty hot we haven't seen uh, any major slowdowns or anything like that bars are cooling off but nothing too crazy they're not like um, low balling or they're still paying over list price so if you guys want to see real estate data you can go to California Association Realtors right here car.org oh yeah let me share this in the chat this is a Google Doc so we'll share this in the chat so you guys can um, check this out okay all right so look at all this data um, so the market is super good very very strong across the whole California a lot of pendings still and you can read a little bit about it right here they give you a quick little summary uh, which is pretty nice quick little summary right here on, on the market uh, August sales price was down three and a half percent but look at this from last year to this year 21 percent increase from last year to this year that's just one year so if you bought a house last year, it would have gone up by 20%. That's kind of crazy, right? Uh, what else? And the price is still pretty high. Medium price for California, 800 grand. Bay Area is much higher. It's going to be like a million and over. So everything is still expensive, still pretty hot. Um, so the market's good. I want to share with you this article too. Does anyone know whose house is this? Anyone know? Anyone have is a? That the, is that the Winnie the Pooh house? It is. <laughs> How did you know? I saw it online. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the coolest thing in the world? So this is Winnie the Pooh's house that you can rent for only a hundred and thirty dollars a night. What? Yeah, hundred thirty dollars a night. That's better than staying at Marriott. I don't want to <laughs> stay at Marriott with no kitchen. This you gotta hang out with Winnie the Pooh. You have uh, all the his honey jars. You can eat his honey. So only hundred thirty dollars. That's amazing. Um, but your flight ticket to United Kingdom might be a thousand dollars. But it's okay. Your hotel is only a hundred and thirty dollars. You guys want to see the video of Winnie the Pooh's house? I'm gonna book it. Who wants to go with me? Um, let me show you this video. It's real quick. It's a sneak peek inside Winnie the Pooh's house. It's okay, we watch you for one minute. Who Inspired House is available to book on Airbnb as part of Disney's 95th anniversary celebration of the lovable children's character. A Pooh Bear takes care of his tummy. The Bear B&B, as the company refers to it, is in the UK in East Sussex in the Ashdown Forest. There are two separate stays available and it sleeps up to four guests at a time. Kim Raymond, a Disney-appointed Winnie the Pooh illustrator who has been drawing the iconic bear for more than 30 years, is hosting the Airbnb. He brought Pooh's house to life by taking inspiration from the original decorations of the illustrator E.H. Shepard. The house is fully kitted out for guests to enjoy, including a double bed on the ground floor and a mezzanine area with two single beds. The lounge space comes with a seating and dining area for guests who appreciate a snack roll or two. During each stay, guests will be taken on a guided tour through the original 100-acre wood, play poo sticks on the iconic poo sticks bridge, and enjoy locally sourced honey, H-U-N-N-Y, inspired meals. And you should enjoy these things, since the house rules include strictly no heffalumps inside the house. Hands are to be kept out of the honey pots. 
a snack of a little something encouraged at 11 a.m., Pooh Sticks is mandatory and multiple naps are permitted. Isn't that cool? What's a heffalump? What does that mean? Does that mean no making love in the house? <laughs> What's a heffalump? Let me Google that. I don't know what a heffalump is. That's very interesting. Heffalump. Heffalump. No elephant in the house. Elephant. Elephant. Oh. <laughs> Why would you bring an elephant? I think it's a another term it for elephant. Be... No, I think it might be because of like the Winnie the Pooh um, storyline. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Okay, no heffalumps in the house. It, I just learned Come a new on, word. You, you should know this by now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Now I know. <laughs> heffalump. Interesting. Okay, that's my new name. Heffalump. Okay, so let's continue. So I think we're going to copy this idea. Can I build this in someone's backyard and rent it out? It's just a tree and a door and that's it. I didn't see a bathroom or anything, so you don't even need a bathroom. Just just rent out the house. Let them use a porter potty. So that's kind of cool. So let's continue straight into our uh, main agenda today. How to leave your W-2 job. So uh, let's welcome Elisa. So thank you, Elisa. Everyone thank Elisa for joining us today. She's the busiest person I know. She just made a new baby and uh, what else? What else is exciting with you, Lisa? Uh, I'm working on a, a big project. A big uh, one. It will be reviewed next week, uh, next <laughs> next year. Oh, how big? Um, it, it's something different. Really? Yeah, it's not a it's not a house. Oh, yeah, but it's exciting. It's not a house. It's a business or something. <laughs> I want to know. I, I don't want know. to say too much. <laughs> Share one secret. Just one little secret, like like a tiny it's little clue. Something educational. Oh, you're gonna start a school. <laughs> Interesting. That's, that's all I'm gonna say. Okay. <laughs> all right, sign me up. Sign me up. We're enrolling. We're enrolling. <laughs> yeah, you gotta all of us for sign up. So everyone, uh, reach out to Elisa. Everyone, follow her Instagram. Let me share with you her Instagram and her YouTube channel. Isn't that amazing? Elisa has two million views. So two million views. I've been following Elisa since she has like hundreds of followers. Wow, you're the very <laughs> first loyal one. I think I found your name in one of her videos. Oh, That's really? how I met. <laughs> Tom, Tom uh, is the guest star on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's fun. I, I like all your videos, so detailed and uh, it's awesome. So look at look at all these views. You, you got like 400,000 views. That's amazing. That's, that's half of uh, certain countries, 400,000 views. <laughs> and then your Instagram is pretty good too. Very, very uh, um, helpful information on Instagram. So good job on building that up. And it only took a year or two, Thank right? You. Only one year. You did that one year. Um, yeah, YouTube uh, YouTube channel. I've been doing it for uh, almost a year and a half now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. So, anyone anyone wants to learn how to build a YouTube channel, reach out to Lisa. Um, <laughs> anyone wants to learn how to make a baby? Oh, can we show your baby? She's so cute. <laughs> Real quick. Do you have pictures? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So this is my favorite <laughs> one. Look. Look at Lisa's. <laughs> look at that nice smile. She's happy because she's gonna learn how to flip houses for free from her mom, and uh, <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. So congratulations, and Thank you. cool. Let's let's get right into it. So, Alisa left her high-paying job. She was making like a million dollars a year, but she left her job to <laughs> to pursue real estate. Yeah, <laughs> you came from Google, right? So tell us about yourself and uh, how you got started. Sure. Yeah. So um, I I worked for Google when I was in China, so before I came to the States, and then I, I came here for business school, mm -hmm. and then um, I was working at um, AOL, and it was a, a acquired by Verizon. Yeah. So um, I worked I worked there for a few years while I was investing in real estate on the side. Mm -hmm. And then um, 
in 2017, end of 2017, I was laid off from my job wow. and um, I started flipping houses full time. Yeah. In, in 2017, 2017. Yeah, so that, mm -hmm. that's like a blessing in disguise because you started real estate more and more. Did you ever get your real estate license or you just jumped no. right into it? I've never had a license. Yeah. You yeah, never... but I, I'm uh, mistaken as a real estate agent all the time. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> thinks I'm an agent. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, so never had a license. So that's good. You don't really need a license to do real estate investing. No. Yeah. I don't cool. think so. Yeah. So um, I guess what's, uh, how was your first year and, and, and how did you even land your first deal for everyone that's just starting and trying to mm -hmm. just find something? The first year was tough yeah. because when you are learning about the business, there is a steep learning curve. Mm -hmm. And I was also doing my full-time job. Um, I was still on the full-time job. So that was 2017, yeah. I started flipping houses on the side. Um, my first deal was um, I found it by cold calling real estate agents. Nice. So I started building my network of agents by just cold calling them. Nice. Um, and then I, I think I called probably hundreds of agents. Yeah. And then uh, I found my first deal after about a month of calling. Wow, just one month. Yeah, but it was a lot of work. I, yeah. I spent probably um, at least a couple hours calling. Yeah, a few hours a day. Every day, yeah. Wow. What was your script? What was your favorite thing uh, you tell them? Um, it, It's pretty simple because you want to catch people's attention right away. Mm -hmm. When you are on the phone, they can't see you, so you have very limited time to, to let them know who you are, what you want yeah. from them. Um, before they hang up on you. So right. I just say, uh, hey, uh, my, my name is Elisa. I'm a real estate investor in the Bay Area and um, I'm looking for fixer uppers. And I, so I remodel them yeah. and I purchase them from you. After I remodel them, I relist the house with you again. So you will earn at least double commission. So yeah. that's um, what really, um, attract the agent's attention and then they think that oh like if they work with me instead of earning just one side of commission they can earn at least double commission so right. that's um what uh, appealing what's appealing to them yeah very cool so the mainly the commission the incentive and then how do you mm -hmm. stand out how do you stand out nowadays because everyone every investor is telling them that and Every investor is text blasting them now. You you will be surprised. Um, most investors try to approach agents by sending them emails or doing yeah. voicemail drops. Yeah. So very few people actually pick up the phone and try to call agents. Oh. So when you call them, you are you already stand out. I see. They feel like oh, most people just like they send out a mass email. Yeah. So like they're not taking a lot of time but you are calling them and you reach them on the phone, mm -hmm. then they they just think that, oh, you are really serious about this. Yeah. And later on, after I was laid off from my job, I had more free time. Um, so I actually uh, meet up with agents in person. Yeah, so meet up with So agents. when I meet up with them, they say, oh, like they are uh, approached by other investors multiple times a week, mm -hmm. like usually through emails or or voicemail drops or whatever. But um, I was the first person who actually asked them to meet um, in person. Wow. So just by meeting mm -hmm. them, you stand out. So they remember you mm -hmm. more. Yeah, maybe meet even at an active project or... Uh, so no, just at a, at a coffee shop or yeah. in their office. Gotcha. Okay. I didn't have an active project at the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you're starting out, you don't yeah. have an active project. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Okay. So just call agents, meet up, set the appointments, uh, try to get in front of them, right? Try to, try mm -hmm. to just talk to them and, and keep, keep that relationship building, building, building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So very cool. So tell us about your, your first deal. Let's talk about your first deal. Sure. Uh, my first deal was 
um, a Victorian style home. Yeah. It's uh, over a hundred years old. Nice. Um, it's in the Nakley Park in San Jose. Yeah. Can I pull it up? Can I? What's the address again? Um, <laughs> let me let me think about about the address. Okay. Um, no problem. Two two eight. Ten ten to eight. So. Two two eight. Oh, two to eight. Two to eight. Yeah, South Sixteenth. South Sixteenth. Yeah. In San Jose. Mhm. Mm All right. Let's check out your very very first flip. Oh, that's a good area. No that's, babies. That's this is like a downtown area, right? Kind of like downtown Japan town. Yeah, it's kinda. a Nakley Park. It's kind of a little pocket neighborhood. Yeah. In. San Jose. So this area, there are a lot of older homes, like over a hundred year old homes. Yeah. And you these want. homes. Sorry. Yeah, I think someone's uh, mic's on, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah, just continue. So um, the the home is really old. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of the infrastructure needed to be updated. Wow, 1915. I think I met you. I met you at the house. Yeah. That the, <laughs> that's the very I, first time. In the time. beginning, yeah. Wow. Yeah. In the beginning, I tried to wholesale it yeah. because it's a it's a very big house mm -hmm. to um for me to flip as a beginner. Yeah. It's twenty six hundred square huge. feet. Yeah. Wow. So look at the value now. One point eight. One point eight. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish I I held on to it. Man. So this was <laughs> so you you um you bought in two thousand seventeen. Um, for how much yeah. again? Uh, for a million. A million, a million. And sold it for one point three five. One point yeah. three five. Wow. wow. So, how much did you put into the repairs? Um, I think it was like a little bit over a hundred thousand. Yeah, hundred thousand. So it's still profitable. You were still able to make money out of this um, big house. Yeah, I made about eighty thousand. Wow, that's really good because a hundred grand to fix twenty six hundred square feet. And it's old, so you had some good contractors at the time. No, the contractor was actually a nightmare really? to work with. Wow. Yeah, so in the beginning, we agreed to um, $100,000. Um, he even suggested suggested that we add a bathroom in the house. Yeah. So with the, within the 100000 mm -hmm. And then as we keep, as we, um, as the project goes on, um, he said, oh, this was not included. That was not included. Oh, and then in orders. the end, he didn't really add a bathroom, but then the budget still went over a hundred thousand. Wow. So and he also uh, made me hire a structural engineer. Mm -hmm. he, he said part of the house was not permitted, but I had the permit for it. Yeah. I had like paperwork from the city. And he said, oh, it's not safe for my crew to work there. What? So he suggested me hiring a structural engineer to evaluate the house. Yeah. And the engineer is actually his buddy. So oh. they both made money from the deal. And then the project was delayed by like two months. Oh, man. And then um, the engineer reviewed it. And in the end, he said, oh, the structure is fine. What? He actually didn't submit any plans or um anything to the city yeah so you have to pay for that that was like two or three thousand right for the structure four thousand four thousand yeah. for the structure and mm -hmm. all he said was it's okay yeah he he delayed it by two months you can pay me two thousand i'll say the house is okay <laughs> wow that's so I, I knew it was fine because yeah. it was all permitted yeah the the there there's an addition in the back if you go maybe um scroll down a little bit mm -hmm. there's an addition you can tell because the style is different so yeah. you can oh, see, this... yeah this is the addition i see it's it's it was added on or uh, later yeah. so the style of the room is different from the rest of the house yeah the rest of the house has high ceilings but this room is just regular ceilings and it's kind of kind of ugly so yeah. he said this room was not permitted oh. but i actually had the permit from yeah. the city. Wow. So you paid extra for that. Um, and mm -hmm. then, but luckily, you still sold for a high price, 1.3. And um, um, I thought I would be able to sell for even more. Oh. I thought I would be able to sell for like over 1.4. Yeah. But um, I think because of the addition, it looks 
different than the rest of the house. Yeah. So um, some buyers were not interested. I see. Okay. Uh, Jimmy had a question. Hey, uh, thank you, Tom. Hey, thank you, Lisa, for actually taking the time to actually share your uh, story with us. A uh, quick question for you regarding the contractor. Uh, how, how did you find the contractor then, and uh, do you actually have your own contractor now that you actually use? Yeah, I have. I have a a, a good contractor now that I I've been using regularly. Um, I found the contractor through a referral, so. Um, I asked other investors um, for their contractor contact, and then I was able to find this good contractor. Very nice. So many referrals are the best, right? Because you can trust them; they have the reputation already. Um, mm -hmm. But but this one wasn't the best contractor, right? Because he just wanted to charge more and more. Yeah. Yeah. But that's and um, in the beginning, so it's very. I learned later on that it's very typical for contractors to do that. Yeah. So the first day when we started the work, um, I saw like twelve guys in the house. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like they are going to Moving finish fast. the project so quickly. Yeah. And then later on, like because I was still on my full time job, I was not able to check on the project during the day. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to go after work. Um, when my when I get to the house, everybody left already. So sometimes when I uh, was able to go during the day, I saw like only one or two guys there. Yeah. At best, so like they usually try to when they start the project, they send a lot of people. So um, you see that oh, they have a lot of guys working on your job and. As soon as they start, it's very hard to, for you to fire the crew, right? Yeah. Because nobody wants to take on a half project. Right. So they start the project and then they actually take on more projects than they can handle. Oh. So later on, they just have fewer and fewer people at each job site. Yeah, this really That's why up. your project gets dragged down for a very long time. Yeah. So it took eight, uh, how long yet for this one? Eight months or? Uh, it wasn't like four or five months. Four or five I months. Think. Four or five months. Okay. Yeah. Four or five months. Um, so it looks pretty nice. You did a farmhouse sink, subway tile. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. you invented this farmhouse look. See, everyone copied you after. <laughs> the white cabinets. Um, it's it's more like to um, to be consistent with the Victorian style. Oh. This is actually. Victorian style, um, yeah. the farmhouse sink and the um, subway tile backsplash. Yeah. yeah, it looks really nice. I like your sink. And you right can there. see the, yeah, you can see the, um, the cabinets are actually more ornate too. It's not. It's not um, the shaker one. Shaker, no. Yeah, these are more expensive, right? Yeah, it's more expensive. Yeah, how much were these cabinets? Um. I don't remember that well. I yeah. think maybe, maybe a couple thousand more expensive wow. than Shaker. Wow. Yeah, I yes. think this this whole set was something, maybe around six thousand. Six thousand. Okay, and then now it's probably more since two thousand seventeen. But that's yeah. The price may have increased. Yeah. Yeah. So very cool. Your first flip. Uh, you learned a lot of lessons, made money, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you, you you probably bought that one with hard money, right? Yeah, I still buy all of my projects with hard money. Yeah, so ten percent down and all that. Um, I think at one point hard money was like uh, up to ninety percent of the purchase price, but yeah. now since the pandemic, they dialed down a little bit, so. Uh, usually they do eighty five percent. Eighty five. Okay, so eighty five. And yeah. the more you put down, the lower the rates are. Gotcha. Very cool. So who's your favorite hard money lender? Um, I work with two lenders. Okay. Um, still like, it's like one with this lender and another project with the other lender. Yeah. Um, I like Conventus and Lending Home. Okay. They're both pretty good. Conventus and Lending Home. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We mainly work with them too, Conventus and Lending Home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they are rates are very competitive, and they can fund within a week. Yeah, very nice, very nice. So shout out to Conventus, Lending Home, 
Um, I think Brenda, right? Brenda is from Letting Home. If you guys want to connect with Conventus. Brenda. Conventus. Uh, I mean, Conventus. Yeah. <laughs> and then Julius <laughs> from yeah. Letting Home. So Julius. 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 Yeah. yeah, Julius from Letting Home. So yeah. uh, they're pretty good. So reach out to them, get approved. A lamb had a question. Go for it, lamb. That'll be $5. <laughs> Hello, I just have a question regarding the, the decoration. So um, um, are you the one who uh, do the decoration after the house finished the project? The staging, yeah, the stage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. I mean like, yeah, it's all like the furniture and- Oh, I, I hire a staging service. I don't oh. do it myself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you see how much it cost to hire someone to do that? Um, in the South Bay, it's usually depending on the size of the home. If it's uh, 1,500 square feet, like if it's um, three or four bedroom, two bathrooms, um, usually it's less than $3,000. Okay, I see. Thank you. Yeah, sure. very good question. And then you... Um, I had a quick question. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Um, sorry. Um, I was wondering, because I know like probably a lot of people have run into the same thing that you experienced maybe on your first deal. What would you do like now if that happened to you? Like, you know, if you have a, um, a contractor who's obviously like running up the time, running up the numbers, like what do you do in that situation? I think, um, first of all, I would have screened the contractor better. Um, I would have asked for um, referrals, um, like talk to the previous, um, like his previous clients to see what his work style is. And then, um, so like in the screening process, I would have done more to prevent such things from happening because once you once you hire a contractor, as I mentioned before, it's harder to fire them. But um, I probably have pushed back when he told me that um, the back addition was not legal because it apparently was. Um, but I didn't know better, so I, I didn't know how to do that. Um, even though it's hard to to fire someone like during the project, still it's it probably was a good idea to to have done that. So now you'll be quicker to fire them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just fire them, let them go, and then let's say they're halfway through their project, <clears throat> so you'll just pay them for half of the work and just ask them to mm -hmm. leave. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just pay them to leave. Um, mm -hmm. But in the, in a nice way, because you don't want to have them mad and then they break stuff or, or damage the house, right? Or put a lien on your house. Yeah, yeah. Or put a mechanics lien. <laughs> yep. Pay them to yeah. leave. Yeah. So that's interesting. So you have to um, have that tough conversation sooner with them, sooner than later. You can't, you can't just keep on dragging it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we also have mm -hmm. that same problem with bad contractors. It dragged out, dragged out. And then they ran mm -hmm. out of money. So they asked us to borrow money. Which is a terrible idea. Never lend money <laughs> to your contractor to because contractor. you'll never you, get it did back. Did you lend them money? Yes, that was a bad idea. Oh no! <laughs> so never ever lend contractors money. Um, that's a that's a red oh. flag that they can't even pay their own guys. <laughs> their employee <laughs> asked us to pay them because their employee was not getting paid. I was like, what the heck? Oh, I'm, I'm not a <laughs> okay, but that was a good that's learning terrible. lesson. Very good learning lesson. Yeah. Um, uh, where have had a question. All right, go for it, where? I think you're muted. Let me ask to unmute. Morning. Right. So I have a question. So the, um, the 10%, probably 10, 15%, does that include the uh, amount you had to put down to, you know, to kind of fix the house as well? Or is that separate? Oh, that's the uh, purchase price. So um, hard money funds, up to 85 to 90 percent of the purchase price and you, you need another source of um, funding for the rest of the purchase price but hard money does fund uh, they can fund up to a hundred percent of the rehab cost too if you have a really good deal very nice thank you so the hard money letter sure. could fund the rehab 
um, could fund the rehab, but they want to see a good spread. If it's kind of a slim okay. spread, they might not give you the rehab money. Um, but if it's a good deal, they'll fund the repairs as well, and that could be easily 100 to 150 k. So you don't have to yeah. come up. Yeah. Usually, uh, the guideline is 75% of the after repair value. Yeah. So their total loan would be less than 75% of the ARV. Okay, very nice. So total loan, 75% um, ARV. So it's, it's safe for them. It's still safe because there's mm -hmm. a big spread. Okay, very cool, very cool. So that was your first deal. So now let's jump into a, uh, a recent deal. I saw that you just uh, listed one $2 million. That's pretty amazing. $2 million. <laughs> That's a big flip. Can we talk about that one? Let me get the... Uh, sure. Yeah, so yeah. on Norlius, right? Norlius. Norlius. Nor yeah. <laughs> Norlius. It's in Almaden Valley. Almaden Valley, that's that's a good area, right? With a lot of land and good schools and all that. Yeah, the it's a kind of a premium neighborhood in yeah. San Jose. Very nice. So Norelius, I can't say that Norelius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to pronounce. <laughs> so very very cool. So two thousand square feet listed for two million. So now let's step back. Mm -hmm. Let's go back and uh, tell us how you got this deal and and all that an agent brought the deal to me yeah so agent brought it to yeah, you yeah so um she works with an investment group mm -hmm. um so the group actually um is nationwide they they invest in real estate nationwide yeah. and um they purchased this property through i think foreclosure or something really wow and then they decided not to do the rehab themselves yeah so they actually sold it to me oh nice how much did you get it for 1.71 1. 1. <laughs> you have it right there 1.71 <laughs> and then um yeah. what are you planning what are you hoping to hit on the arv um the arv so they are our a couple houses nearby mm -hmm. sold for 2.2 wow 2.2 yeah man yeah. that's crazy 2.2 it is so you listed it yeah. a little bit lower just to attract a lot of buyers and then uh try mm -hmm. to hit 2.2 yeah very nice very nice so this one you got from an agent um the investor bought it for foreclosure so basically the mm -hmm. investor made money do nothing right they just bought it's, it they're so, like wholesaling yeah the wholesaling property. yeah yeah very cool so you got it for 1.7 your arv is one uh, 2.2 .2. so .2. that's half a million spread so the spread is mm -hmm. pretty safe right pretty safe and then yeah um I, how did you budget for the remodel because this is a big house so let's say give or take 100 dollar price per square feet 200 grand how did you budget for that? Uh, my budget was around 170 or 180. Yeah, 171, 80. Did you did yeah. you keep your your budget? Yeah, we spent I think yeah right around there. Yeah, very nice, very nice. So just around 170, 180. Um, I like mm -hmm. this trim. This kind of cool. So you got the white going on. Is that uh? Uh, Swiss coffee kind or? of a modern um, this color is called simply white simply white by Benjamin Moore yeah. oh simply white and then this I was... like this color for uh, two-story homes oh. I painted before on another two-story home and yeah. it looked really good this is kind of the um, modern farmhouse look yeah I like it it is it's not too dark near the trim it's kind of like a navy-ish gray so it's kind of pretty yeah yeah, what Dark color is gray. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that also Benjamin Moore? Yeah, it, this color I like a lot. It's called Black Horizon. Black Horizon. Actually, yeah, every time I use a a dark color yeah I, I choose this color. I paint it uh, on the door a lot. Oh, the front door. Yeah, that's right. Black horizon. It looks mm -hmm. it flows together nicely. It doesn't look too too much, right? Too much in your face. It's just very um, warm smooth color uh, mm -hmm. so tell us about the remodel Did, is this hardwood or you just put uh, hardwood oh you put hardwood yeah. so this because it's over two million so you definitely want the finishes to be 
um, high more end. high end, yeah. high end materials. So the house already had um, hardwood floors mm -hmm. in most areas. We just had to add, I think, in the kitchen. Yeah. And the yeah, in the kitchen mainly. Nice. So you added some hardwood floors, so not too much, just some areas. Um, I like mm -hmm. this nice light tannish colors, very warm mm -hmm. with the wood. So instead of mm -hmm. going like all whites, you add a little color to the walls. Right. Yeah. So I didn't use a gray color. I yeah. wanted the house to look a little more modern. Mm -hmm. um, so we finished the floors with this natural wood color yeah, instead very warm. of any stain. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I like hey, Elisa, I have a question. So you match, did you match the existing floor to the kitchen? Yes. Is that, um, is, is it hard to do if it's like an older home or? No, it's actually very easy because older homes usually have the three inch planks and mm -hmm. you can find it very easily. Very nice. And then, so you went with um, black, right? Black. Black and gold. Mm -hmm. I see little black and gold. Um, well, <laughs> the gold was not the intention. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't know there was gold, but yeah. it, it looks fine. Yeah, yeah we didn't together. really have other gold um, um, hardware yeah. in the house. Yeah, not so much gold. So white. And then this is chrome, right? Is this chrome or? Yeah, so um, usually the um, faucets uh, in the kitchen and bathrooms, I still use chrome. Oh, is there a reason or you, you like that look? I just don't like black faucets that oh, much. Interesting. I think it's a little too much. Yeah, like too much black <laughs> It's okay, everything. the handles are fine, but yeah. I, I just don't like black yeah. um, faucets. And it's also, way, it's also a little bit more expensive. Yeah. It's well, like it adds $100 to your budget. Yeah, yeah it, it's more expensive, but I just don't like the look. It's yeah. it's kind of personal. <laughs> yeah, I see. And then uh, Juan said it's easier to clean chrome because matte probably gets dirty all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah, very cool. So I like that light, very nice. Um, Thanks. Yeah, tell us more about this remodel. Any challenges, anything interesting? Um, I think, uh, oh, the backyard. So if you go to the backyard, we mm -hmm. actually um, had a, a wooden deck yeah. in the backyard before. Oh. So um, in the beginning, when I when we were looking at the house, I, we thought the deck can be saved. Yeah. So we were going to just repair the deck. Yeah. And then as my contractor started working on it, we realized that um, the deck was just um, damaged beyond repairs. Wow. So uh, we had to rip it all out. And uh, right now the wood prices are so high. Yeah. So if we were to put in a deck, it would be a lot more expensive than to Take it out. Um, to put in new concrete. I see. So we decided to do new concrete in the patio. Um, I think if we put in a deck, it would look uh, cooler, Yeah. but um, to save money, even with new concrete, it, it costs more than $10,000, wow. this big this, of a concrete patio. This area costs $10,000? Yeah. And the deck costs more, like $15,000, yeah. $20,000? <laughs> oh my goodness. I forgot the, the cost, yeah, but yeah. probably $15,000. Yeah. Wow. So that's a ten thousand dollars just like that, just for some mm -hmm. concrete, man. So, so expensive. this is a kind of a a, a good lesson to um, for new investors. Yeah. Even like even though my contractor is very good and mm -hmm. I he's very trustworthy, um, and we look at the house um, very carefully when he gave me the bid, but still he couldn't tell that the deck was beyond repair. Oh. So. Like it's a good lesson for new investors. You really need to have some budget for unexpected costs. Yeah. Like like this. Yeah, extra ten grand, I could throw you off, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like you. You need to have some contingency. Y yeah. Y yeah, and a new fence. You added a new fence too on both sides. New fence, yeah. Yeah. On one, on the other side, we were able to split the cost with the 
uh, with the neighbor, but yeah. on this side, um, the neighbor, it's actually a rental property. So the yeah. landlord didn't care. <laughs> so I had to pay for a, wow. all of it. So you pay for it. How much did that cost to do both sides? Um, I think each side is about um, two, two, three thousand. Two to three thousand each side. So each side. Yeah. So that's also another six grand, just like that, just on the fence, mm -hmm. not even including the mm -hmm. landscaping or trees or anything. No. Yeah. So landscaping ten grand, and then and then another ten grand for the concrete. So just your landscaping mm -hmm. costs twenty thousand dollars. It's a big yard. Wow. Yeah. I want to become a landscaper. We didn't even count the front. <laughs> the front oh, the we front. had to put in the top too. <laughs> oh, so that's 25000 for landscaping. And then is this yeah. a new driveway? It looks new. No, it's not. Yeah. The driveway was in good shape. Gotcha. Okay. But new grass. Grass is big now. People mm -hmm. love grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. How much does grass cost? I'm curious. I want to know. Um, I think... I have to I have to look, but I think it's like at least four or five thousand for four this. Four or five thousand for just the, grass. the front yard. Just the front is four or five thousand for this. Yeah. What? All right, I'm going with fake grass. Is it cheaper? <laughs> or I'm gonna fake grass is not cheaper actually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna spray paint fake the grass dirt. Is about the same price, but you just don't have to like. Well, it doesn't really matter to you. Yeah. Because you are not going to keep the house. That's right. It's for the new owner, it, it might be cheaper, but they may not like it when you try to sell the house. All right. I'm just going to take the grass from your house um, and move it to my You plant. can do drought resistant uh, plants, but yeah. people don't actually like it that much. Yeah, it's kind of ugly. It looks like a desert, right? Yeah. It, it's interesting because um, after they buy the house, most likely, most people can't really maintain grass yeah. because. Um, you have to water it at least two, three times a week. And yeah. most, a lot of people don't want to pay for that much water. Right. But when they buy the house, they really like how grass looks. Yeah. So they would buy the house with grass. But then um, a lot of times when I go back to those houses I've sold, like the grass is like a lot of it is dead. <laughs> <laughs> they don't maintain it. Yeah, they just want to buy it. That's interesting. They just want to buy the look, mm -hmm. and, but they don't maintain it. Mm -hmm. So they don't mm -hmm. mind. So I'll just take some of the grass over time then. Little patch, but... You can try to seed it yeah, if seed it's it. the right timing yeah, in nice. the year. You yeah. can try to seed it as soon as you start the project. And then ah. Um, by the time you finish it, maybe the grass will be ready. Yeah, very cool, very cool. So I hope you hit 2.5 on this. Let's check out the comps <laughs> real quick. Um, I'm gonna hop sure. on the MOS, so we're gonna see. Um, and everyone submit an offer on this, so at least I can get multiple offers. And then she'll hit 2.5. Look at this, you don't have much competition. There's only one active, there's one choice. Mm. And it's 32 yeah, days. Yeah, that house is, so it's is um, ugly, right? A fixer upper, yeah. Oh, so 1.7 for a fixer upper. Uh, nice photos, though. I like the photos. I like that color of the door. That's kind of cool, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah I, they may have painted it recently. Yeah, so fixer upper uh, going for 1.8. Uh, they try to do 1.9, can't do it. It'll probably sell for 1.7, right? Fixer upper. Hey, maybe you should you should offer this one 1.7 or even 1.6 1.65 because they're they're sitting on the market yeah yeah we just found another flip for you just like that <laughs> and then look at the areas hitting 2.2 2.2 everyone yeah. wants to live on <clears throat> norlius let's norlius see. yeah <clears throat> so let's check out this remodel real quick nice landscaping 2.2 they have a pool look at that pool that's beautiful, right? Yeah, a yeah. pool in the Bay Area, it may not be a plus though. Yeah, sometimes it's a bad thing some too. Some people like yeah. it, like some people actually um, don't like it that much yeah. if they don't swim. Oh yeah, you can see this is what the house looked like before. Oh. This is my house. <laughs> yeah, I would have kept this dirt to save money and spray paint it, <laughs> spray paint it green. Yeah, the, the roof was old. Oh, you uh, put a new roof? At the end of its life, yeah. Oh, how much it the roof cost? It was wood shingle. Wood shingles, wood shingles. That's like 10 grand, 12 grand? 
I think twenty thousand. Twenty thousand dollars for a new roof? Yeah, it's a big roof. Wow. Okay. Okay. Twenty thousand dollars. All right. Can we? Um, so this is a good one. You, you'll probably hit two point two. Can we check out your San Bruno one that you recently sold that made a lot of money? I was watching it on YouTube with the uh, on Sean's channel. Sean's channel? Oh, yeah, yeah, the San um, Bruno one. Uh, you don't want to see a recent project? Oh yeah, let's check out a recent one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one was kind of old. Oh, let's. Uh, a recent one you can see thirteen forty. Thirteen forty. Shasta. Shasta. S H. Yeah. San Jose. Yeah, that one. Shasta. All right. So we got a lot of questions. Uh, curious about why pool is not a plus uh, because it's high maintenance. It's too expensive for people to uh, clean and it. And the weather here, um, it, it's so it, if you don't have a pool heater, mm -hmm. the pool temperature is usually like around seventy six degrees. Yeah. So it's a little too cold for yeah. you to swim. Yep. So you you need a pool heater, and then that's going to add up. Um, to the cost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For maintaining the pool, um, like you have to hire a pool guy mm -hmm. to clean it every and add chemical to it every week. Yeah. And um, also, like the like a lot of pools, the the finishes will have to be redone after um, 10, 20 years. Yeah. We recently refinished our pool, so I know this. Yeah, very expensive. It's expensive to maintain the pool. Yeah, everything in the backyard is expensive. That's why we're starting mm -hmm. a landscaping company. Uh, but all you guys, <laughs> it's gonna be Tomas's trees, Thomas trees, or yeah, <laughs> let's think of a good name. So check out this one. You bought it for one point one fifty, and you sold uh -huh. for one point six. That's half a million different. Yeah, it's actually the sale price was 1.635 but we sold it to an agent so he actually waived his commission oh. so the actual price is more like 1.675 wow that's even better so you got an extra mm -hmm. 40 grand just just because the agent um mm -hmm. waived his commission so we have like yeah. five minutes left and then we'll, we'll try to um uh, wrap up on this one so how did you get this one is it off market or how do you get off market from an agent. From an agent. Yeah. So the the seller was, I think he's like ninety four years old, yeah. and he was moving to a, a a care a care facility. Yeah. So um, he wanted to sell the home. I see. And he didn't want to do any work to it. Yeah. He wanted a quick and easy. And then um, we gave him a little like uh, two, three weeks of re free rent back. Free rent back, okay. So they like the mm -hmm. free rent back. And then mm -hmm. um, let's and check. And we took care of everything he left behind. Nice, so leave all the unwanted items. Seller likes that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at this beautiful house. Look at that artwork on the outside. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, Spanish style homes are really cute. Yeah. If you go to my Instagram, you can see some before photos too. Oh yeah. Before okay. and after. Let me check out your Instagram too. And then tell us about this one. So uh, this one was interesting because um, on public records it says it's a three two or mm -hmm. three one. Three one. Um, but when we went to the house, we realized that it's actually only a two one. Two one. There are only two bedrooms. Yeah. So we decided to convert the dining room in the front of the house yeah. into a bedroom. So and then we also added a bathroom in a closet. In the closet? So we made it a 3-2. Oh, yeah. like a half bath or a full bath. Full bath. Yeah. Like in the master, in the master, if you scroll down, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. so that that was what the house looked like before. Yeah, wow. Oh, a question. <laughs> sure. Um, uh, since you converted it to a bathroom, did you have to do plans and stuff for the city? Yes. Okay. Yes, we submitted plans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. How much did that cost for the plans and the permit fees? I don't think it was that much. Um, um, I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. So we nice. also made the kitchen bigger because um, the, the old kitchen was really small. I see. 
Oh, we can. I like your sub baton all the way to the top. So that's kind of cool. The mm -hmm. whole, the whole wall. Uh, very yeah. nice. So how much did you spend again on this one? I think it was 140. 140, 140. So 1. 150, put in 140. That's about 1.3, and then you sold it for 1.670. So that's good. Mm -hmm. That's probably like quarter yeah. million, just like that, right? Quarter million. Um, 300,000. 300. 300. <laughs> Wow, 300,000 in one deal. That's amazing, congratulations. Mm -hmm. I like. Thank you. I like this marble tiles all the way up. Is this it's Home Depot? It's not actually marble. It looks like marble, but yeah. it's actually ceramic tiles. Oh, ceramic. So that's cheaper, right? Like two or $3 per square feet? Three, so. $3, yeah. yeah. Very nice. This looks like Home Depot, right? Home Depot vanity? That one is actually, uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. It's simple, clean. It has that shaker style. So mm -hmm. you can do Home Depot style and it still can sell as long as you make it nice, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, glass. I noticed you do a lot, a lot of glass closet doors. Does that make the room look mm -hmm. bigger or something? Yeah, it makes the room look bigger and it looks better than the, um, like the, just the cheaper closet yeah. doors. Yeah. That's true. That's true. You just have to wipe it a lot. Might get a lot of fingerprints, but it makes the room look <laughs> yeah, bigger. Yeah, that's the that's the homeowner's job. <laughs> that's true. Oh, I like this. No shower doors. So that's interesting. Some people do shower yeah. doors. Some people don't. What is your take on that? Some people do shower curtains. Yeah. So they may want to do a curtain if you put in a door. Yeah. Then they may not like it. I, I wonder why people like curtains. And especially when um, I do the shower tiles really nice, yeah. um, you don't want curtains or, or doors to cover oh, it. Oh, interesting. And that saves money. You save like a thousand bucks, right? At least a few hundred. Yeah. 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 Uh, one quick question was, uh, what was the whole time for the project and how much of the 300K went to hard money interest? So let's say this one, you bought it for um, 1.1. 1, 1. Yeah, I think it was pretty quick. Yeah, from March to July, so, in, so eight, three months. Yeah. Yeah, so let's four months, four but months. that in, that's from close to close. Yeah, four months of interest, and it's only eight percent, roughly eight percent interest. So let's say eighty grand, eighty grand for the one million, and then cut that in half. So there's only like forty grand in interest, right? Roughly forty grand. Um, I actually pay less than eight percent. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so, so hard money is not even that much, like 30, 40 grand. So from um, after hard money, everything, you still can clear a quarter million on this one. Yeah, so pretty good. Very amazing. Very amazing on, on this one. It's, it's a small house, so it's easy to fix, right? Easier than that big one, the, big, um, the first one it's that you did. It's old. It's yeah. old, though. It's yeah. um, about 100 years old. So oh. uh, we had to do new electrical mm -hmm. and a lot of new plumbing. Yeah. And then we changed the layout at the new bathroom. Yeah. Converted the, a new bedroom. So it was still a, lot of work. a good amount of work. Yeah, 140 for a small house, which that's pretty high. Um, but you updated mm -hmm. everything, updated plumbing, updated electrical. So pretty nice, pretty nice. So. Uh, great question. Uh, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. All these are unexpected things that you realize later on or before purchasing the home, these electrical needs to be upgraded, all those things? Uh, we, we knew it. So when my contractor looked at the house, he already knew that the, the house had knob and tube electrical, so we had to update it. Okay. Yeah. So new electrical, uh, that probably cost like five, six grand, right? New wiring, the whole house. I think it was like three, four, three, four three or four thousand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So three, four is not too bad. Uh, plumbing. How much did it cost to update plumbing? Um, a lot of it is updated when we remodel the kitchen and bathroom. So that's yeah. kind of counted towards the kitchen and bathroom cost. Gotcha. So I don't know the. Yeah. Okay. So so most of it was already updated in the bathroom kitchen. So that's good. Yeah, we added that patio. So the a good thing about this house is mm -hmm. the backyard is huge. Yeah, it looks really so you big. See, this is the old backyard, and yeah. we added that. If you go up three pictures, mm -hmm. we added that concrete patio. Oh. Uh, up, up one more. 
Oh, this one, this one. Yeah, this concrete patio we added. That's nice. And then the garage uh, was not really used as a garage before. Yeah. It was um, we had to add part of the driveway. Oh, it's a new drive. More concrete. More concrete. Yeah, I see like this part is yeah. so new driveway. Before you cannot drive all the way yeah. to the back. Wow, and that's expensive too, right? Concrete, it's really mm -hmm, expensive, like mm -hmm. $5, $10 dollars per feet or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so concrete, but it's cheaper than building a deck. So that's, that's good to know, concrete <laughs> over a deck. And no yeah. grass, no grass needed because the backyard is so big, right? Mm -hmm. There are actually like three layers yeah. of the backyard. Wow. And um, <laughs> the the new owner could build an ADU in the yeah. back. Nice, nice, okay. Very cool. So it's 1102. Let's get ready to wrap up. Any last question before we wrap up and then we'll get ready to uh, uh, head out for the day. So one, one had a question. How long are plans taking at the moment in San Jose? Uh, it depends. So um, I think if you can do over the counter permit, mm -hmm. it's you have to uh, schedule an appointment. So before yeah. you can just go to the city and you can go get over the counter appointment right there. Yeah. But now because of the pandemic, you actually have to book an appointment and appointments are very, uh, are booked very far out. Mm -hmm. Right now it's about, I believe last time I checked, it's like three months out. Three months out. And you have to check every day to wow. see if they, there are any cancellations. Sometimes they have cancellation for the next day. Yeah. So that's how you can schedule appointments quicker. And then if you need to um, do the, like the submit the plans, the complicated plans, yeah. not over the counter permits, then yeah. you have to, uh, it's months. Man. So we actually have, I have another project in San Jose where uh, we submitted the plans like over a month ago. Yeah. It's still not reviewed yet. Wow. Like the, the plan checker said uh, he's still reviewing plans that were submitted a week before, before yeah. us. So just waiting. So now expect to wait three months just for permits and plans and all that. Yeah. Wow. That's, 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 that's a lot of interest um, if you're paying hard money and all that. Yeah, it's because they're so backed up. Yeah. Because the planners are or plan checkers are working from home. Yeah. So they are probably not working as efficiently <laughs> as uh, they were before. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So you have to add that to your time frame when you're doing these flips now. Add another three mm -hmm. months. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you for all the uh, really good information today. Uh, can we take a Super Saturday selfie real quick before we wrap up and then we'll call sure. it a day. So thank you. That was really good information, Elisa. And everyone follow her YouTube channel, follow her Instagram. Um, yeah, she's gonna be too famous one day. She's gonna be on TV. So <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah, let's get a selfie real quick. You guys ready? You guys ready for a selfie? 10, sure. nine, eight, show your camera real quick. Seven, six, Five, four, three, two, uh, one. Everyone wave at the camera. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Enjoy your Saturday. We will see you uh, next week at uh, Big Al's. We're not doing the, the Zoom, so we're going to meet at Big Al's for the live events. All right. So, uh, thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you, Tom. Bye.